Good morning again. First of all, uh, uh, I, I want to apologize. You have to listen to me again. That was not actively planned. That just kind of came together. So um, anyway, what we have this morning, um, if you watch the screen, um, Amy's going to be putting up some stuff for us. And I want to highlight this. Uh, this is an introductory proposal. Nothing, nothing is carved in stone. And nothing has been bought and paid for. This just comes out of a number of meetings um, that the elders and the directors have had over the last couple of years. Okay? Um, we wanted to include a couple of pictures there. First of all, the way we look. And then the way we kind of sometimes do special services. I don't know how well you can see that. Uh, but those are things that we want to keep in mind. That we do not always use the sanctuary uh, just for regular services. Uh, sometimes we use it for more than that. And uh, I insisted as we worked on this slideshow that we include that out of Psalm 127. Unless the Lord builds the house, the builders labor in vain. And even though this is not a sermon, and I'm sure you're glad of that, I do want to open in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this building that you have blessed us with. We thank you for those who came before us and saw the need for a place to come together and worship. And Lord, as we've realized over the last few months, we can worship in a parking lot. We can worship in a family life center. We can worship in here. We can worship you in spirit wherever we are. But Lord, we ask now that you would superintend this initial presentation, realizing that there will be more meetings ahead that there will be decisions ahead. But Lord, we don't want this to be about what any of us as individuals want. We want this to be about making this a functional space that can be used for your glory. And it's my desire that we keep it focused on you. We're going to keep the main thing the main thing, Lord. So thank you for being here. Thank you for blessing us. Watch over us now. In your son's name. All right, Amy, if you'll go to the next slide, please. And I don't, I don't want to insult you. Um, when I do presentations to students, sometimes I ask them to read stuff. Sometimes I read it. But I'm going to read a little bit of it. We hope the font's big enough you can follow along. Uh, some of you are visual learners. Some of you are oral learners. So whatever works for you. But where we're now sitting, okay, this was built in 1973. Since then, the only major update has been a carpet change. That's it. Since 1973. After discussions among the elders and directors, we have jointly decided it's time to consider giving this building some much needed changes. In paint, carpeting, flooring, seating, lighting, as well as any needed upgrades in audio and visual equipment. So that's what we're looking at. And we hope that you will be excited and that you will look forward to this. I think we, as we've gotten into the process, have become more and more excited. If you would, Amy. The other one. Okay. First of all, um, I do want to, to let you know that the first thing we did was um, we asked Del Patterson and, and Dennis Kuhn, uh, our resident art teachers, to sit down and just look at it from an artistic standpoint. You know, what were those things that might improve the visual appearance uh, of this? And, and they agreed on some basics. Uh, it's dark, even before we turn the lights out. It's dark. Um, the, this oak wood that was once really popular is kind of dated in age now. The, the red carpet, it's, it's worn really well. I mean, good decisions were made when it was purchased, uh, but it's a 1970s carpet. Okay, so here's what we want to think about. How can we make the auditorium brighter? Well, by removing old wallpaper and doing some painting. And we believe a good way to go is a combination of whites. That's going to lighten it up. But we want to make sure that we use contrast as well as an important design principle. We want to avoid monotony by introducing some dark colors. And we'll show you some examples 
here in a little bit of, of a number of churches. We want to make sure we select flooring and seating that will coordinate with the chosen color palette, something in grays or in neutrals. We want to review the lighting with the intention of making it brighter, but, but maybe also some flexibility. And we want to review and address the audiovisual needs. And as elders and directors, we've started that process, but no decisions have been made yet. Okay? I got my notes here, so. Um, next one, if you would, Amy. So here's the goal. To brighten the auditorium using that palette of whites with contrasting darks, to create unity through the repetition of color, to consider visual movement that will lead the eye to where the colors are repeated. That's the thing that kind of naturally occurs in art. Maybe you realize it, maybe you don't. And to create an atmosphere that makes the place feel pleasant, spacious, welcoming, that makes it feel kind of like home. So those are our goals. One of the things we're considering, and I don't want to hear gasps or moans yet, stick with us. One of the things we're considering is chairs rather than pews. Most people, especially older people, find chairs more comfortable than wooden pews. Chairs are more flexible and can be reconfigured for special events. Weddings, funerals, vacation, Bible school, you get the idea. Chairs are easier to move for major cleaning or renovation. Right now, if we do any work in here, there's additional tasks involved with that process. Chairs are less expensive and easier to replace individually or as a group. Storing pews during a major update is more difficult than chairs. Tim, anything you want to add to that? Well, the only thing to this is... Nice and loud, because we're recording for people that had to yeah, live. Uh, there are a few things. One thing, if, if you look at the distance between the back of the pew to the front of the seat, it's about 12 inches. With chairs, we could expand that, make it a little more comfortable. We could actually walk in instead of doing this. Uh, you do have flexibility if a chair gets broke or something like that. You can exchange it with another chair. Um, Amy, if you'll give us the next slide. Okay. This uh, is an example of the Wesleyan Church over in Greensburg, the, the way that they do chairs. And you'll notice that what they have done is um, some of the chairs at the end of the rows have arms. And that would be one thing that would most likely be considered, um, trying to make it as, as functional as possible. Okay. Next slide, Amy. Okay. Just an example of another church that's kind of designed on, on a similar um, perspective as our own. And you see how they have gone to that. Next one, Amy. Another thing that we are looking at potentially is replacing the carpet with carpet squares. As carpet squares uh, become damaged, they're easy to replace. You don't have to replace an entire section of those. So that's something that has come up in the discussions, and we know a number of, of churches that have, that have gone on that route. Okay. This is, is an example of a ceiling similar to what we have. It's called a tongue and groove ceiling. And you'll notice that they have painted it white primarily, but you'll also notice there's some contrast with some of the shading, with the flooring, with the coloring, with things of that nature, the windows. Next one, Amy. And then some other examples. Now there's one uh, that, that you see still has the pews, but using a variation of color palettes uh, to kind of draw the eye to the center of things. And you'll notice in that case, Don, the communion table is still in the center. Uh, and that's pretty significant there. Go ahead, Amy, if you would. Uh, another example, uh, kind of similar design to us from a basic building perspective. You've got the stage. Of course, they have the choir behind it as well. But again, the contrast between the light and the dark that, that makes it feel, we think, makes it feel comfortable. And then I think we've got a couple more. You see the same thing, the long entranceway there focal point being the cross, the communion table, uh, the, the one aisle, and things of that nature. 
really, really bright uh, example there. And this was a computer-generated suggestion of what our auditorium could look like. Again, nothing has been decided yet, uh, but just a proposal of what could be done. Uh, just a couple things to point out to you, for instance, two screens. That's one thing that we've talked about uh, from a, a visual standpoint. Again, opening up the stage a little bit, removing these banisters here, something of that um, perspective. But again, just, just an idea. Just an idea. If you go on. Who and how? Well, we kind of have a vision, if you will. The vision is going to be passed on to a renovation committee. The members of that committee will consider input from you, and they will recommend an official proposal to the elders, at which point the elders will review, comment, and pass a recommendation to the congregation for a yes or no decision. So this is not something that's going to happen in one week or one month. It's going to be a process. Uh, and we uh, hope that by going through those steps, everybody will feel that they have some potential input to that. Okay, so here is uh, the renovation team. These are the individuals that have been tasked with leading uh, through uh, their talents and their gifts. Dennis, uh, because he is a director and because he has an artistic sense, is on the team. Dave and Tim are going to rec uh, will, will be the elders on the committee, and they've already been involved in, in more uh, than some of the rest of us have. As Tim said, he's visited some churches, spoken to people, taken some pictures. Steve and Becky uh, are, are going to serve on the committee. Uh, Lee is going to be on it, and Kim will be on it. So please take note uh, of those individuals and uh, start praying for them right now. Amy? So what can you do? Well, we would ask, first of all, that you would prayerfully consider uh, this opportunity, this proposal. We would ask that you feel free to contact any commi committee member with, with your comments, uh, with questions. And they may not be able to answer those questions right away because it's an ongoing process. Um, we would suggest that you give through the building fund. Now, please understand, we believe we have enough money to do most of what's being suggested. You've been very, um, very good in your giving over the years. And some wise decisions have been made with financial stewardship. And so uh, we're, we're in a lot better shape than a lot of churches financially. Now, when you give through the building fund, uh, please remember that doesn't mean you take it from your tithe. This is above and beyond. It is biblical that you give beyond your tithe for things like this. So please consider giving through the building fund. Um, you know, if you still use the envelopes, there's even a place right on there where you can designate it. Uh, and then uh, we can get that separated. Pray for these committee members. You know, they have volunteered to do this because they believe it is worth their time and their efforts. So please, starting today, pray for those committee members and the process. That what we decide might be for God's glory and the future of New Hope's ministry of the world. Focus on that last part. It's not about what I want, what Tim wants, what John or Eli want. It's about what is going to allow us to further our mission that we've been called to do. Okay? And Amy, one more. You might remember prior to the pandemic, we had talked about even a bigger renovation, changing the front, some things like that. That's not completely gone. We're just kind of looking at this as like step one with a potential step two uh, down the road, perhaps. So that that's still there, but we feel like it's time that maybe we do a little bit of work in here. Okay? Now, what I would suggest um, is that you think and possibly write down questions that you might have, concerns that you might have, and again, the members of the committee will try to answer those as best they can. 
Uh, you know, anytime you're in the middle of something, sometimes you can't answer a question. And that doesn't mean somebody's trying to be obtuse. It doesn't mean they're trying to, you know, to be rude. It, it means they don't have an answer right now. And I appreciate Dennis and, and Tim both willing to, to sit up here. Uh, and I would take any general questions at this point, but I don't feel equipped uh, really to answer specific questions because as you can see, it's just, it's just a vision at this point. Are there? Well, if you wouldn't mind, let's, let's stand, please. Tim, would you pray for us, please? Thank you for being here. Happy Father's Day. God bless. Hey, John Seasting here, and uh, you probably thought you'd get through this without any of me, but I'm the editor for the, the video, and I cleaned it up a little bit for online uh, presentation. <clears throat> uh, so uh, I, I'm just wrapping things up here at the end. And uh, I, I guess one of the things I want to do is, on behalf of all the church, I want to thank John Titus, Jonathan Titus for doing the presentation and for the other people that were involved in that. Uh, Tim Jarnigan helped, and Dennis Kewen is a, a visionary behind, uh, behind the scenes on this. So I just want to thank all of them and all the people that have put in initial input. Uh, there'll be more, I'm sure. Uh, some of the things that came up during the presentation are, as you might expect, question about pews or, or chairs, what are the, the practical versus aesthetic considerations that uh, we want to make uh, during this, and I think a lot of people have strong uh, opinions about that. We'll continue to work through that and come to what we think is a good good plan for the congregation as a whole. There were also some questions related to chairs about if we went to chairs, is there hard, hardware available for things like communion cups and uh, booklets or hymnals if we ever uh, wanted to include those. And of course there are, it would just be a matter of finding that. There were some questions having to do with uh, money. Jonathan Titus talked about how we actually, with building fund, are in a pretty good position to do some kind of uh, renovation. And I also think there's, there's no doubt that some kind of expense is going to have to be undertaken fairly soon, if nothing else, just to paint the building, which will be uh, the sanctuary, which will be a considerable undertaking because of the dimensions of the sanctuary and the high, high ceiling. It's gonna, uh, that's going to cost us a considerable amount just to get the wallpaper off and to paint it. Uh, and then even the, the money thing, chairs and pews, uh, both have expenses involved in them. We would have to buy chairs, but also uh, refinishing and uh, reupholstering pews is one of the most expensive things you can do in a sanctuary. So just keep in mind that there are all kinds of considerations to weigh there. Um, <clears throat> one more thing that came up had to do with architecture and stained a glass where whether we were keeping the stained glass and in anything I've seen I, I hope I'm not speaking out of turn but but I haven't seen anything any proposal that suggests an overhaul of the actual architecture of uh, the sanctuary other than to do some work on the on the platform the stage uh, every plan I've heard uh, includes the stained glass that we have and that wouldn't change. We would just try to match uh, our insides with, with the stained glass that's there, but, but that's, uh, that's obviously a very good question. Um, 
I'm going to close just quickly by putting the slide up again. Know what you can do. Jonathan mentioned those things you can do, which starts with prayerful uh, consideration. And then the only other th thing that uh, I would throw on top of that is please uh, stay tuned through email and in, in church announcements uh, as to what uh, the next moves are and when we will, as a congregation, be deciding uh, on a plan. Thanks for thinking about it. Uh, exciting time. Uh, obviously, we have no idea exactly where this ends up, but it's exciting to be involved. Uh, in a, a process, the process of uh, upgrading uh, a room for a future generation, uh, a room that 50 years ago uh, some people created for us so that we could enjoy it. So be a part of it, uh, do it prayerfully, and uh, hopefully we'll come out with something that glorifies God and helps new hope. God bless.